like someone made a fake movement plan to cause the accident. But why? I can't imagine Karina would have enemies, but... But let's see what she has to say. We don't know much about the history of the characters yet. I don't think it's Olga, it's too obvious. Karina, please listen calmly. Tim, what's going on? We found out that the accident earlier was actually deliberately caused by someone. What? But how? Is what you said true? Please tell me everything. Of course. Someone had given fake instructions to the Yanma. Is that what caused the accident? That's right. But who would do such a thing? Why? It's possible that the culprit had some grudge against you and destroyed the violin as payback. Could you tell us a bit more about your violin? Of course. My grandfather made it for me before he passed away. Oh. Wow, the person who did this is a scumbag. It's the only one of its kind. Wow, that's horrible. Even now when I get discouraged, I remember the message he left for me on the violin. It helps me feel better. Oh my god, this is so bad. Huh? A message? There was a message on the violin? I never noticed. Oh, you couldn't have. It's written on the inside of the back plates. Oh! What if this isn't her violin? Oh! Oh my god! That's actually a crazy hint. That could incriminate more than just Keith and Max then. Somebody could have replaced the violin knowing that the other violin, her original violin, was a memento from her grandfather. It could have been really expensive for some reason. Assuming that her grandfather was someone famous or something, or even just, you know, her violin, since she is a, a famous and, and gifted musician, could be sold for a lot of money. So this was deliberately done to set that up. The violin was destroyed, apparently, but it wasn't actually. And then she wouldn't have to start an investigation to find out where her original violin was. Okay, let's, let's continue. It's written on the inside of the back plate, after all. Oh, so you can't see it from the outside. No, you can't. Actually, I think the only ones who've seen it are me and Cricketune, since we used to go play in my grandfather's workshop. That's really good. You'll help us find the culprit. Thanks, we can use your help. We don't know who did this or why, but don't worry, we'll get to the bottom of things. Apparently, Krikatoon was present when Karina saw the message, too. Krikatoon says Karina read the message to it, it said. To my darling Karina, even when I am no longer with you, I will always love you and your music. A truly great detective. There was a prompt, wasn't there? Uh, double team! <laughs> oh my god, he looks so dumb. At this point, I just feel sorry for him. Okay. Is there a Krikatoon interaction? A bolt? Don't forget, I'm... Hmm. Karina's more to tell us? The message on the violin, something on your mind. I helped Krikatoon pick up the pieces of the violin after the accident, but I don't think I saw a message anywhere on the back plate. Dun dun dun. Could be that you just didn't notice it. If it bothers you, we could double check. Yeah. Is this the violin? Wait, so she brought it with her? Then she would obviously know that this is not the violin that her grandfather gave her. Here's Karina's violin. It really is wrecked, isn't it? Maybe she just doesn't want to see it. Like, she doesn't want to... Get reminded of the accident, because she thinks it is her violin. Let's see, the back plate with the message should be... This one. But I don't see any message written anywhere. So that means this violin is... A fake. The culprit's goal was to steal Karina's violin. The culprit must have tampered with the Yanma's cue sheets 
so that the accident would hide the fact that the violin had been swapped. That's right. He almost got away with it too. If it weren't for this pesky kid and his Pikachu. I swear I'll catch this culprit no matter what. Thank goodness the violins have been swapped. That means that the real one is still safe. That's the one good thing about all of this. First things first, we should tell Karina and Krikatoon about the swapped violin. They may be able to help us narrow down who the culprit could be. You're right, Pikachu. Karina, the violin there is a fake. The culprit arranged for the accident to happen so that nobody would notice the theft. But then, where is the real violin? The culprit probably still has it, but please keep this a secret. We don't want the culprit to get nervous and hide it away. I never noticed my violin had been swapped with a fake. But I think the one I used for my performance was the real one. I could tell from the tone. Yeah, Krokatoon says so too. Right, you can actually tell from the sound. Why is that a testimony though? Oh, something felt off to you too. The material seemed softer than normal, I see. It must have been difficult for the culprit to get the exact same materials used. So, the testimonies we got from the two of them are shedding light on the crime. Really. Let's organize what we know. To get started, let's figure out exactly when the violin was swapped. Open up your case notes. Is that really enough information? Now, uh, let's try and figure out when the violin could have been swapped out. First, when do we know for sure that the violin was already, uh, a fake? It was backstage, right? Huh? Is it this then? True. By the time I had delivered the violin, it had already been swapped out with the fake one. So it was backstage. I mean, I thought it was during preparations. Same thing almost. Fake one. But we still need to figure out when was the last time the real violin was seen. During preparations makes the most sense though. Not when Pikachu was carrying it, because Pikachu carrying it means that somebody couldn't have swapped it since he's carrying it. So I, I think during the preparation it still makes the most sense. Karina's grandfather made it, that's how we can tell. Swapped out the violin after Karina finished her performance, but before I moved it. So, during preparations, right? Interesting answer. Now we know when the violin was swapped. Yeah, the culprit aimed for the exact moment Karina would not be around her violin. Judging from that and the tampering with the cue sheet, the culprit must have been very familiar with the show. So the culprit is someone who works here. I mean, that's pretty obvious. That's what we need to find out now. If they didn't work here, then uh, they wouldn't have been able to swap it. It would have just been a straight-up theft, right? And, and the Yanma thing, too. So I think all evidence is pointing to Keith now, but why? Because Keith controls the Yanma, because he's one of the 80 carries. But why? There's no motive. I still think Max has a motive. But his motive would have been to sabotage the show. I mean, technically this is going to sabotage the show to some extent. I, I think it's still like 60-40. Now we know almost the exact... 
exact moment when the violin was swapped. The culprit has to be someone involved with the show. Let's find out about the alibis of everyone involved between the time Perina finished playing and I brought out the violin. You mean during the preparations, which is when the violin was switched. The question is always why in many things, not just solving mysteries, but understanding things. It's always about asking why. Why would somebody do this? We could look at every single character, go down the list, and ask why they would do this based on the evidence we have right now, based on what we know about them. But I think just continuing makes the most sense. What's up? Are you investigating the accident? Don't overdo it. See, the answer is almost always the one you don't expect. So this guy's very nice, right? He's nice, he's clumsy, bumbling. It doesn't seem like he's very intelligent, but that's like the most telling sign in these kinds of stories that the villain is him. Thanks. Where were you during the rehearsal, Keith? I don't think I saw you until right before the accident happened. I went down to a lower floor to call the assistant Pokemon as soon as we found Perugly. And what happened with that? Well, it didn't show up even when the scheduled time came, so I called the office to check. Turns out I'd mixed up the dates. He's making too many mistakes. I think that's actually incriminating him. Turns out I'd mixed up the dates and had scheduled it for the wrong time. So I ran back to the studio to let Hiro know. So that's what all the ruckus was about. Did you run into anybody on your way back to the studio? Yeah. As I recall, I ran into Amelia. She just finished calling Max and Olga. Mm. Now that I think about it, this person couldn't be the culprit. Really? Oh, is it really Max? Is it going to be like the previous case as well? With Spritzy? Because we had an incident with Max where he could make Chatot do things based on commands, non-verbal commands. So could he have ordered Chatot to do something with the violin while he wasn't there? Okay, so now I think it's more 60-40 for Max instead of the other way around with Keith. About the assistant Pokemon schedule. Are you the one in charge of scheduling and managing the assistant Pokemon? That's right. I'm really sorry that my mistake put you both in a dangerous spot. Yeah, next time pay closer attention. Don't worry about it. Neither of us were hurt. He still seems very suspicious because of an external factor, which is stories like this usually have a bumbling character as the villain. The one you least expect, basically. Do you think you'd be able to get back to filming? I'd say the odds are 50-50. I've already put in a request for a new violin. I feel bad for Karina, but she'll have to use the new one. I was in the studio ever since Karina finished her performance. I was making sure the staff knew the plan for the show, checking the footage and so on. Yeah, he was next to me the whole time. So it's absolutely impossible that it's him, right? We were in the studio then too. I didn't see anyone leave or enter until Amelia and Keith came back. Seems like Hiro and the staff here have a solid alibi. Because we know it happened backstage. Okay, so <laughs> it's not the Wii Fit people, those random little silhouettes. The Wii Fit people are not the villains. Gotta keep it a secret. Except we have people right here next to him. Oh my god, this is a terrible idea. But it's game logic. They can't hear. The violin was swapped out? Super loud! Exclamation point. So that the other people in here can hear as well. And you say that there's someone here that did it? Yes. I can't imagine. No, actually, could it be that he... Do you know something? 
Well, this is just a rumor, but I've heard Max has a lot of debt he needs to pay back. The violin was a very valuable one, so he may have stolen it so he could sell it. Hmm, it sounds like Max could have a motive to steal the violin. Okay, now this basically says that Max didn't do it. Unfortunately for games like these, when you get such an obvious answer like this, it's like, it has to be him. It has to not be him. So that's really unfortunate that it was presented this way. I think in the future, games need to stop doing this just because people expect it nowadays. At least I do. Maybe maybe the younger audience doesn't, but eventually, once you play enough games like this, it's, it's going to become more apparent. I'm not going to talk to the Yanma. They don't have anything else to say, I'm pretty sure. Are you still looking to the accident, Tim? Huh? Oh, uh... Hush, don't mention the swapped violin until we're ready to catch the culprit. Right. Oh, uh... I mean, yes. You mean after Karina played, I was checking the dressing rooms to call on Max and Olga. But you came back to the studio alone, didn't you? Weren't you able to find them? Oh no, not exactly. They both seemed like they were busy, so I just told them what I needed through the door. Oh, I see. And did you meet anyone else? Well, oh, I remember. I ran into Keith near the studio. Everyone's going to have an alibi, I think. I ran into Keith on my way back to the studio. He was standing near the entrance, but he looked very depressed. He was about to go report to Hiro that he messed up the assistant Pokemon's schedule. And he came back to the studio after that, right? That's right. I'm not going to talk to the Wii Fit people. Let's go backstage for a sec. Talk to someone here. There might be evidence as well. So if Max did signal to Chat Hot for some reason, there could be evidence of tampering. But I'm almost convinced, based on external factors, that it's not Max. Unfortunate. Can't look at these. The thing about mystery stories is they always go for the unexpected answer now. Or, I mean, they always have, technically. Maybe not always. Sometimes mystery stories just give you the clues, but they don't give you, like, a blatant answer like Hero did about Max. They give you some of the clues, and then you have to piece it together. That's usually what a well-written story looks like. S how, how did this thing do the cry again? Blah, 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 blah. Oh, there we go, yeah. Yeah, like that. Bzzzt is blah, 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 apparently. Hey, why are they glaring at each other? Hmm. Let's see what they're saying. It's time to decide whose special talents are truly better. S it's saying being able to smell the difference of foods with your tongue is more amazing. Blah, 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 blah. It's saying making laundry super clean with ultrasonic waves is way cooler. Oh, that is way cooler! But that's like comparing Lepa berries to orange berries. Still, we can't just... <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> Still, we can't just leave them like this. What do you think we should do? I have a battle. I'm pretty sure Ekans loses. Some things can only be resolved in battle, eh? Who knows? Maybe it'll help in some way. Anyway, you two need to make up, okay? We can come by to check on them later. Maybe something will have changed. Is there anyone important here? I don't think so. Mawile? Oh, I haven't talked to Mawile yet? Huh? What about Magnemite and Ekans? That's so ridiculous. It's like a putty from Power Rangers. It's doing it again. Stop it. It's boring because they don't pay attention to you. It's like you're being left out. I don't think they mean to be rude or anything, but maybe Mawal just likes to have company. This is pointless. Get me out of here before the putty arrives again. Mimikyu. 
Kiki. Mimi Kiki. What? Are you still upset that I got chosen as the assistant over you? Kiki. Don't get too full of myself? Ugh, sure, whatever you say. More importantly, there's something we need to ask you. It's not Mimi Q, is it? Mimi Q would be the, uh, other answer. Like, it's maliciously lashing out to punish people. But I don't think that's the case. Unless Mimi Q is the partner of somebody. Because so far, I think Mimi Q has no partner, right? Mimi Q is the only star Pokemon that has no partner, I believe. Hmm. I never thought of this until now. Magnemite is staff. Yanma or staff. Hoot Hoot is staff. And, and hero. Ekans is with that guy and his grandmother. Or his mother or something. Mawel is with that AD carry, I think. Perugly is Olga. Max is Chatot. Krikatoon. Karina. Amelia nothing. And Mako's still gone. Do you know anything about the accident that just happened? Kiki. It was going around the dressing rooms while avoiding the staff here, so it doesn't know what was going on at the studio. Huh? Why was it doing that? Doing a bit of self-promotion? You're definitely persistent, I'll give you that. Why was that in red? There must have been a reason for it. Wait, did I miss a room here? I think I was focusing on Mimi here. I missed a room. This is Olga's room, I think. Uh, about Olga's alibi. Yeah, what were you guys doing after we finished the rehearsal? You came back to the dressing room for a nap. Olga gave you a good brushing too, so your fur is all perfect. You know, I can't really tell. You again? What do you want now? Oh, uh... Oh, come on. You're a detective. Don't let her intimidate you. Go on. Ask what you need to ask. Where were you when we finished the first rehearsal? I stayed in my dressing room. I was giving Perugly a nice brushing. Did anyone stop by during that time? One of the staff members came to call on me. I answered, although I didn't open the door. I see. That adds up. Someone comes all the way to get you, the least you could do is open the door for them. Although, come to think of it, something odd happened after that. Yes, yes. Tim, be sure you remember what people told us. What, what happened after that? Please tell me. What was this strange occurrence? Someone came and beat on the door. I looked out through the fogged glass window but didn't see anyone out there. I wondered what that was all about. Was it Mimikyu then? Was it Mimikyu or was it one of Max's signals? I don't think it would be one of Max's signals. I think it was Mimikyu, right? Huh? Where's that bit about Mimikyu? It didn't record down the red text that Mimikyu said. Going around the dressing rooms, avoiding the staff. It most likely was Mimikyu. Oh, look at this thing. Oh, it pushed me! Can I make it push me along the entire path? I wonder if I can angle it perfectly. Damn, I think that was kind of close. Oh, it is Mimi Q. Look at that. Yeah, Mimi Q was the one doing that. This is Max's room, right? This is the. Oh no, it's not the final one. What? Oh, still doing your investigation. Go easy on playing detective, all right? Playing detective? Nobody's playing here. Max, you left the studio once the first rehearsal was done, right? Yeah, I figured I'd go over the script one more time in my dressing room while I waited. Did anyone come by during that time? 
Oh yeah, a staff member came by to call me. I was in the middle of something, so I couldn't open the door, but I said it'd be right out. So he didn't actually see this person. What's the point of these cutscenes? These cutscenes are absolutely pointless. Get out of here. You're watching TV and you say you're the best thing on the screen, eh? You've got confidence for sure. Oh crap, hold on a second. What did you and Max do once you were done with the first rehearsal? You came back to the dressing room together. I seem to recall you're saying that's what you were gonna do, yeah. What's that? You were excited because Max said he'd give you your snack early today? We weren't asking about your snack. Someone came to call you. They knocked on the door and said something apparently. That must have been Amelia. Is Amelia a person or a Pokemon? Why do you ask that? Apparently a Pokemon stopped by too, in addition to the person. He doesn't know who, but apparently someone rammed into the door. Chatot says it was so surprised that it accidentally yelled out. Yeah, I bet that would be surprising. What did that Pokemon do then? It ran off making some kind of cry, according to Chatot. Can Chatot mimic the cry then? That would tell us for sure it's Mimikyu. Hey, could you show us your cool mimicking skills again? Oh, you can? Try to give signals to see what happens, eh? Tim, give it a shot. Hey, that's the voice of Mr. Graham. And cut. Oh. That's pretty awesome. Oh, that must be Hero. What's with the self-contented look? Trying to act all cool, are you? Hey, go easy on me. I tried my best. Yeah, I wouldn't put it past Max to do that. There probably are more cues than we can imagine. Just collar or something? It's not doing anything. I guess that's too subtle to use as a cue. Get out of my way. That's the best one. I love that one. Wow, that's definitely Olga, all right. <laughs> if someone yelled at me like that, I definitely have a heart attack, even if it was a prank. Is that it? Do you have anything to say about that? Huh? Sheesh. Green thing. That shout out is so awesome, I love it. It was Mimikyu. Or was it not Mimikyu? If it wasn't Mimikyu, then what would it be? There's no other Pokemon that small. Right? Yeah, nothing else is that small, other than Chatot itself. Hoot Hoot is not that small, it's too big. You'd be able to see it through the glass, because the glass is one of those vertical ones. So it would have to be below the vertical part. Excuse me. Hey, what's wrong? Well, about the accident that just happened, it seems like it was deliberately caused by someone. Uh, I don't know if you should be telling them that. We don't know if they're involved or not yet. We need their alibis too, don't we? This is pretty bad detective work. I mean that and telling Hero in front of everyone in the crowd. What? But then who's the culprit? We're investigating that now. That's why we'd like to know where everyone was during the rehearsal. You know, like with security cameras. See, why would you do that? You need to ask them first and then tell them there was a culprit. Because now they're on their guard. They're, they're on guard now. We were here the whole time. Yes, we were keeping an eye on the studio from here. Hmm, I think it would be difficult for the people here in the sub control room to swap out the violin. Everyone has an alibi. It doesn't mean that they're not the culprit, though, because they could have another way to do it. 
Hoodoos. Oh, you're wondering what I'm doing? Can't you tell I'm watching Hoodoo? They say it's almost impossible to see a Hoodoo change legs from the one it's standing on. Ooh. But as a detective, I should be able to do that. It's not even that fast. I mean, it is a hoot hoot. It's a pretty terrible Pokemon. Okay, so we have all of the testimonies and the alibis now. We just gotta figure out who the culprit is. Let's see if there's an interaction with Chat Hot. Actually, I just realized something. Banging on the door should have the same reaction as stomping. That's probably gonna be really important. Holy crap. Chat out is awesome. Karina's alibi I guess we don't have yet, but we don't really need it, do we? Yes. Why are we asking about Karina's alibi? I went backstage to put my violin there. Oh, I guess this matters. This actually is important. Hero asked you to do that, right? Do you see anyone else while you were back there? I don't remember. I'm sorry. I should have paid more attention. Please don't worry about it. She couldn't have paid attention, though. So the culprit is? No one. All of our suspects have alibis? I don't want to point fingers, but it may have been Olga who stole my violin. I don't think so. Why do you say that? Well, Olga asked me a few times before if I would be willing to part with my violin. Of course I said no. Of course. Your grandfather made it for you. That's right. But it didn't seem like Olga was ready to give up. So she may have planned something like this. I don't think so. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's not Olga. Hmm. It seems Olga has a motive anyway. But we can't just decide she's the culprit based off of that. A truly great detect That's it, right? This particular issue is solved. <laughs> yes, it's it's solved. Everyone has an alibi. Nobody did it. Well, this is a conundrum. I didn't expect everyone involved to have an alibi. This can only mean one thing. The culprit used the double team. Oh. Neither can you, though, Pikachu! Ha! Huh. I don't think these answers are going to be funny. Damn, yeah, they're not funny. The, the answers, the wrong answers in this game are just not that funny. I guess this one's kind of funny. It was alright. That's right, the culprit must have used some trick to create a fake alibi. That being said, oh, hold on a second. That being said, I don't think anyone working in the studio or self-control room had the time to do anything elaborate like that. I agree. Our suspects are the people who are moving around on their own. That's four people. Max, Olga, Keith, and Amelia. I don't think Amelia- hey, 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 Tim. Bias. I know how you feel, but a detective has to keep an objective view of everything. Still, we could use some more information. Now that I think about it, Mimikyu had snuck out of the Pokemon dressing room and was wandering around, right? Maybe if we talk to it, it'll help shed some light on the situation. 